the Alps, Europe's highest mountain range. Sheer rock faces. Dense forests. And floral alpine meadows harbor many iconic creatures. It's one of Europe's largest intact wild ecosystems. But life is far from easy for those that live here. Persistent snow cover, short summers, and treacherous conditions create constant challenges. Teetering on the edge, life hangs in the balance. And only the hardiest creatures will survive. The Alps are situated in Central Europe, arcing 1,200 kilometers across eight countries, from France to Austria. Encompassing almost 200,000 square kilometers and scaling heights of nearly 5,000 meters, it's one of the largest and highest mountain ranges in the world. Over 100 peaks exceed 4,000 meters. The Alps remain one of the largest unspoiled natural areas in Central Europe. Contrasting seasons and varying altitudes dictate life and where it thrives. Yet they're still home to over 30,000 animal species and 13,000 plants making them one of the richest biodiversity hotspots on the continent. While animals have made home in these remote and stunning landscapes, challenging terrain and rapidly changing weather conditions test alpine wildlife to their absolute limits. And those that have dared to settle here have evolved a remarkable set of adaptations in order to survive. One sure-footed creature copes with this perilous frozen world better than any other. Living on sheer rock faces above 1800 meters, Alpine ibex are perfectly adapted to the heady heights of the mountains. They're an ice age relic that made their way over from Central Asia thousands of years ago and inhabit almost every Alpine country today. Their hooves are their main tool of the trade when navigating these steep faces. They're split and can work independently, gaining purchase on the narrowest of ledges with just one toe. Their soft undersides cushion impact and provide traction, molding around the gnarled rock. Here, temperatures are too low for trees to thrive. So the alpine ibex harnesses what little nutrition they can, from stunted shrubs and grasses that cling to the steep rocky outcrops. A decreased heart and metabolic rate ensures that this energy is expertly conserved during bitter times.
Breeding takes place annually between December and January. And like many other species, dominance is required for a male to gain breeding rights. For the ibex, the only way to determine this is to fight. To find out who's the toughest, males go head to head. And the key weapon in their armory is their meter-long curved horns. Males can stand over one and a half meters high and can weigh over a hundred kilograms, 15 of which are dedicated to the horns alone. By rearing up on their hind legs, they can drive this weight into their opponent with impressive force. Realizing he's no match, the challenger accepts defeat with only bruised pride for injury. But for him, all is not lost. For an animal that engages in such intense fights each year, male ibex have a remarkably high life expectancy. Survival dramatically drops after eight years for some large herbivores, whereas alpine ibex can comfortably live to 13 before feeling the effects of old age. This is because their rutting tactic ensures that dominance is established long before females become ready to mate. So instead of wasting precious energy fighting for every female, the dominant male is instantly recognized among subordinates. And when the time comes, this victor can be left in peace to tend as many as 10 females until each is ready to mate. Elsewhere in the Alps, it's a show of agility over a show of strength when it comes to breeding rights. Like the ibex, Male alpine chamois have joined herds of females. At 50 kilograms, and with horns a fifth of the size, they're slighter than their ibex heavyweight cousins. However, these adrenaline junkies take it to the next level when driving away an opponent. This male has ventured onto the wrong patch. Chamois are exceptional athletes, able to leap six meters through the air, and can reach speeds of 50 kilometers an hour on any terrain. Chases can last several hundred meters on steep inclines, until the victor is satisfied the trespasser is a safe distance from his females. Without the luxury of pre-established hierarchies like the ibex, he will defend his territory throughout the two-month rut. It's a huge energy cost, but the chamois also has a solution. By spending 90% of his time resting between chases, he saves energy for when it matters most, so he too can enjoy a prolonged reproductive life in the mountains.
For six months of the year, between November and April, the Alps are shrouded in an enchanting layer of snow. It's not uncommon for snow to accumulate to depths of well over two meters, enough to fully cover a man. On the high peaks, temperatures can drop to minus 30 degrees Celsius, and wind speeds can reach 250 kilometers an hour. But for some Alpine residents, these extreme conditions give them an advantage over others. For the grey wolf, deep snow is no problem. They're highly adaptable and once had the largest distribution of any mammal, tackling all terrains and conditions. Today, they roam small pockets of some Alpine countries, with strongholds in France and Italy, as well as large parts of Northern Europe. Unlike their more gregarious North American peers, Alpine wolves live and hunt in smaller packs of up to six, and can hold a territory covering 500 square kilometers Wolves have a highly developed sense of smell. With capabilities a hundred times that of humans, they can detect prey almost three kilometers away. And they've picked up a scent. Roe deer roam forests throughout the Alps and live a more solitary existence than other species of deer in the region. Wolves will opportunistically follow any prey for several kilometers with impressive endurance. The secret to their success is in pack cooperation. And they're closing in. This deer is on its own and is in trouble. Heavy winter snowfall has rendered its narrow hooves useless. Sinking clumsily into the snow, it struggles to gain purchase. Now within sight and sprinting distance, the wolves launch their attack. Their snowshoe-like feet evenly distribute their weight to glide effortlessly toward their quarry at over 50 kilometers an hour. Their victims stood little chance. A strict hierarchy governs the pack, which also applies at meal times. Snarling and teeth bearing reinforces positions in the pack. Dominant individuals have first choice, regardless of who made the kill. But in the end, all will get their fair share. Wolves need roughly three to five kilograms of meat each day. But with harsh winter conditions reducing prey numbers, wolves can fast for up to two weeks when food is scarce. In the Alps, every living thing must capitalize on their adaptations to help them through the bitter winter months. Straddling the French and Italian Alpine regions, 
lies the highest peak in Western Europe, Mont Blanc. At almost 5,000 meters, it towers high above this mighty mountain range. Its summit is not characterized by rock, but by an enduring layer of ice and snow, whose thickness marginally fluctuates from year to year. Despite its impressive size, Mont Blanc makes up only a tiny fraction of the entire mountain range. The Alps cover 11% of Europe's surface, over twice the size of Portugal. While their white blanket of snow can be mesmerizingly beautiful, it can also be a powerful force of nature. In a year, over 10 meters of snow can fall in some parts of the Alps. When heavy winter drifts settle on weak underlayers of snowpack, their load can render the slopes deadly. Thousands of avalanches occur in the Alps every year. Snow fractures at weak points on the slope and can send a million tons of powder hurtling down the mountain, exceeding speeds of 300 kilometers an hour. A single avalanche can travel over a kilometer and will undoubtedly annihilate anything in its path. Some are unaware of the chaos that occurs around them. Below the layer of snow hides an animal with possibly the most practical strategy for surviving the winter. If you can't eat, sleep. Found throughout the Alps, the alpine marmot spends over six months of the winter in hibernation within underground burrows. During this time, bodily processes alter to conserve energy. Its body temperature falls to five degrees Celsius. The heart rate drops by 85%. And it will take a breath only once or twice a minute. Yet in April, when there was often still snow cover, changes in brain activity and hormone production prompt them to wake up. Males brave the outside world first. But above ground, he's vulnerable while he waits for his family to stir. Eagle-eyed predators have gone without food too. To survive the coming months, marmots will need to keep their wits about them. At high altitudes in the Alps, for much of the year, snow cover and low temperatures have restricted growth for flowers and trees. But with the arrival of spring, plants burst into life, capitalizing on a few months when growing conditions are right. One of the first to rise is the hardy alpine crocus. A subterranean bulb allows it to remain dormant during the winter months before emerging through the snow-covered ground. Varying altitude creates distinctive zones of plant life on the mountainsides. 
A neat line marks the boundary, where temperatures are too low for trees to grow, giving way to stunted shrubs and small flowers. Below this tree line grows the only deciduous conifer tree in Europe, the larch. Unlike other conifers that keep their needles, larch will drop theirs to protect themselves from freezing alpine winter climates until spring brings new buds to its branches. Its demand for light and well-drained soils means it will readily establish first as a pioneer species, where landslides or avalanches have caused destruction. As temperatures increase, melting snow fills mountain streams once more. Millions of tons of meltwater can be expelled into the waterways of the Alps during spring. And will eventually contribute to some of the major rivers of Europe, such as the Rhine and the Danube finally ending up in the North and Black Seas. Without this shift in seasons and respite from winter, little would survive here. After spending the last six months in a deep slumber, this male alpine marmot has now been joined by the rest of his family. Related to the prairie dog, alpine marmots are the largest rodents in the Alps and are similar in size to a domestic cat. Their ancestors arose in North America 15 million years ago, before migrating to Europe across exposed land bridges. Today, the alpine marmot has taken refuge on the high prairies of the mountains and can also be found in pockets of the Carpathian Mountains and throughout the Pyrenees. They have large front incisor teeth, as well as powerful legs with long, sharp claws, perfectly designed for digging their underground burrows. The main burrow has numerous entrances and interconnected chambers for resting, hibernating and breeding. This underground labyrinth can be dotted across a territory of nearly 30,000 square meters, the size of three football pitches. Their home turf is fiercely upheld against neighboring families by rubbing cheek scent glands on the ground to re-establish boundaries. This large territory may seem luxurious, but it's definitely justified. A typical marmot family includes a breeding pair, plus several of their young from the past two years, resulting in as many as 20 individuals in one given unit. But there's safety in numbers, and vigilance on these high mountain climbs is paramount. Sentries take turns to keep watch. while the rest of the colony go about their daily business. Interactions are numerous within the family, helping to maintain social bonds. And like many youngsters, marmot yearlings just can't resist the opportunity for a bit of rough and tumble. Males engage in play fighting is practice. In a year, these youngsters will disperse from the family range in search of their own territory. Though it's vital, they know from the outset how to ward off intruders who threaten to overthrow them. But 
But these juveniles are having far too much fun to be paying attention. And they have company. The golden eagle rules the alpine skies. Its range can cover over 150 square kilometers, similar in size to 5,000 Marma territories. This female is in need of food, but she's expertly designed with eyesight eight times superior to that of humans and a 300 degree field of vision. Nothing escapes her notice. This is her chance. With a wingspan reaching two meters, the eagle is effortless in the air. Suddenly the marmot sentry is pressed into action and emits ear-piercing whistles, warning the others to take cover. The youngsters have strayed too far and struggle to gain ground back to the refuge of the bars. Honing in, the aerial predator can exceed 200 kilometers an hour. The young marmot stands little chance. Golden eagles require about 250 grams of food a day. At over two kilograms, this prized marmot would last her more than a week. It's a harsh law of nature, but without marmots, there would probably be fewer eagles roaming these skies. Across the Alps, there are around 1,200 golden eagle breeding pairs. They nest on cliff faces below the tree line. Known as an eyrie, this robust structure is designed to last several years and can reach three meters wide. Males and females share parenting duties. This female brings her recent marmot kill back to the nest for a hungry chick. Before hatching, he was incubated in his egg for around 45 days. His downy feathers insulate him from the high winds on this exposed outcrop. He most likely had fellow nestlings. But in eagle society, competition between siblings starts at day one. Different hatching times mean that older and stronger eaglets of the same brood are known to kill their younger counterparts. So this individual no longer has to share the kills his parents bring back to the nest. At only a month old, he still has at least six weeks before fledging. Only then will he begin his exploratory journey of independence. The Alps form part of a band of mountain ranges called the Alpine Belt, which includes the Carpathians and the Himalayas. They were born from a violent beginning. They formed when Africa collided with Europe millions of years ago, which caused upthrusting of giant slabs of rock from the bed of the ancient intervening Tethys Sea. 
The glaciers of the last ice age further carved and molded these mountains into the Alps' current profile. Even today, the plates of the Earth's crust are crunching together. An extra millimeter would be added to their height each year, but is countered by erosion from wind, water, glaciers, and rockfall. At lower elevations, the snow-covered peaks give way to dense swathes of forest. With spring in full swing, it's a much more forgiving environment than higher up in the mountains, and is home to many species of animal, including Europe's biggest cat. After bears and wolves, at almost 40 kilograms, the Eurasian lynx is the third largest predator in Europe. This magnificent beast lives a solitary existence and roams fragmented areas in almost every alpine country. Males hold established territories which can cover 400 square kilometers. They overlap with those of females. Yet liaisons only occur during the breeding season. Its large paws and sharp claws allow it to scale trees with ease. As well as serving as a covert place to relax, it's the perfect tower to watch for prey. With a daily requirement of two kilograms of meat, he's fine-tuned to seek out a meal. His tufted ears can pick up the slightest of movements. His eyes are particularly sharp and are able to spot the smallest of animals from 75 meters away. Bigger prey stands no chance of staying concealed. Especially when they have young to guard. Six months after the winter rot, spring has brought new life to groups of chamois on the slopes of the Alps. Females and their young can live in herds of up to 30. They typically bear one kid who fearlessly follows its mother immediately after birth. This female scales avalanche-torn landscapes in search of food to produce milk for her youngster. He is dependent on this protein-rich formula for the first three months before he can graze on solid food. He has no choice but to keep up but he's still finding his feet and struggles on the rough terrain, giving a lethal ambush hunter the perfect opportunity. The Eurasian lynx is no match for the rapid and agile chamois in the adjoining meadows, but using nearby forest as cover it can creep up on an unsuspecting victim. This vulnerable youngster should be easy pickings. Fortunately for the herd, an alert mother raises the alarm. His cover blown, mother and baby flee to the safety of the pastures.
for the Eurasian lynx. Acquiring a meal in the Alps can sometimes take over three days. This predator readily accepts defeat, conserves his energy, and stays on the lookout for the next opportunity. Since the formation of the Alps, one icy force has helped to create the landscape that we know today. Glaciers. There are over 5,000 glaciers throughout the Alps, totaling an area of more than 3,000 square kilometers. They form at high altitudes, where the snow falls faster than the ice can melt. Over time, gradual compression of the snow forms ice, which can be almost one kilometer thick. To the naked eye, these giant structures appear ominously still. But they are quite the opposite. Even at freezing altitudes, their weight exerts enough pressure to melt ice, forming a slick film of water underneath the glacier. This causes it to aquaplane down the mountainside at astonishing speeds of around one meter a day. The movement splinters the glacier surface, opening crevasses of up to 50 meters deep. As it moves, it rips rock and boulders from under the glacier eventually depositing the debris, known as moraine, sometimes several kilometers from its origin. The changes that glaciers have forged over thousands of years are immense and highly distinctive, and will continue to cut through the landscape, leaving wide valleys and glacial lakes several kilometers long in their wake. Summer is a time of plenty for all creatures and brings changing landscapes to the high pastures. There are about four and a half thousand plant species in the Alps. Almost 8% of them are found nowhere else on the planet. The spring flora give way to wildflowers in June, punctuating the green pastures with a riot of color. In some places, up to 80 species can be crammed into half the size of a tennis court, which attracts insects in their thousands. Honeybees are on a mission to stock their hive. Pollen provides nutritious protein for developing larvae, while the sugary nectar contains minerals and glucose and helps make honey for the winter months when it's most needed. They do not hibernate, but the 15,000 strong colony work all winter long in the center of the hive in order to keep the queen alive. Forming a cluster around her and continuously shivering keeps her warm. But this requires a large store of honey for energy. The colony needs up to 120 kilograms of nectar each year to make enough honey to survive. The equivalent of 60 bags of sugar. Mountain streams flowing through the meadows provide much needed water in the heat of summer. The swallowed water is held in the bee's gut before flying home. It's used to cool the hive, 
by coating broods of larvae and eggs in a thin film. Like any well-trained army, they coordinate movements. The number of bees depends on the needs of the colony. And soon enough, a full foraging mission is underway. But they have competition for this floral spectacle. The marmots have also been busy since they emerged from their burrows. Up to 80% of their diet is flowering plants. During spring, they may do with roots and shoots, but have since gorged themselves on the newly emerged flowers during the short summer window. They pick foliage high in fat to ensure they pile on the pounds for winter. Their survival relies on this. The wise ones will go into their burrow at a hefty four and a half kilograms and will still lose over 30% of their body weight over the winter months. Those who haven't been as gluttonous might not make it through hibernation. But autumn is looming and the weather is turning. It's a race against time to prepare the burrow. Grass is the perfect mattress. Like natural lawn mowers, they preen the meadows, stuffing as much as possible in their mouths. As October arrives, and with their fat reserves full to the brim, the marmots retire for the winter. Another year has passed, and with only one family casualty, they can be left in peace, in the safety of their burrow once again. The Alps are one of the largest unspoiled wild areas of Central Europe. They are staged to an unrelenting world, where wildlife is pushed to its limits. From the up to the windy heights of the peaks, life has found ways to adapt to these harsh conditions. Some residents have finely tuned footwork while others hide themselves away. Geological wonders forge dramatic landscapes, yet some forces leave behind total destruction.